60 Cycle Hum features a mix of products that were purchased or provided and content that is a mix of sponsored, paid, unpaid, and Patreon funded. Use your eyes, ears, and common sense to come to your own conclusions. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and I've got a problem. I've got a fuzz problem. Some people might think it's a fuzz blessing. <laughs> I've got I've got too many of them. I've got 37 fuzzes on the table here in front of me, and I'm sure I have more hidden throughout the house. I know I've got more fuzzes in the Affordaboard box, but that's a whole other thing. Now, these are fuzzes that I've accumulated over the years doing demos, buying them myself, um, and these are the ones that I just could never bring myself to sell. I sell stuff pretty often, but for some reason I hold on to fuzzes. Like they all feel different to me. They all feel special to me. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've never been like, oh, this is just like the other fuzz that I have. They always feel a little bit different and I have anxiety about selling them because I, I feel like I'll never get them back again. <laughs> There's also the element that a lot of these are made by people that I know personally. And when someone sends you a fuzz that they made, like it, fe it feels weird. It feels weird to not have it anymore. It's like Ryan Rotaski from Fuzz Rocious made this and sent it to me. Who cares if I rarely use it? He made it. I don't want to sell it because I know him. I like him as a person. Same goes for so many of these. So what I'm hoping to do with this video is play for about 20 seconds through each one through all 37 fuzzes and then decide after the video, after I edit it and publish it, what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to sell. You can keep an eye on my reverb shop. I'll have a link down in the description if you want to buy any of these. If you think as you're watching this, like, oh, you can't sell that one. Absolutely don't sell that one. You have to keep that one for demos or for your own personal enjoyment. Like comment. Let me know in the comments. If there's one that you want to buy, I guess comment that as well. Ooh, man, this is daunting. <laughs> this is going to be one of those things where it takes me two hours to film this and I edit it down to 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that. All right, let's get started. First up is the Pelotar by Pelican Noiseworks. This is a unique fuzz in that it looks like a clon. It's not a clon, it's a fuzz. It's actually two fuzzes. The gain control is actually not a gain control. <laughs> it's lying to you in multiple ways. It is actually a blend control between two different fuzz circuits. I'm gonna use the baritone for this whole video because I wanna get low, I wanna get fuzzy, I wanna get doomy, and I just got this. I'm having fun experimenting with it. Next up is the Tysco. This is an octave fuzz based on the Fox Tone Machine. This one is nasty and it's huge. The Jupiter Silver Machine. Look at how big this guy is. I've got some other big fuzzes here. Notably, the Valco Blood Buzz, the Janus by Walrus, and the MK2 by Chase Bliss. But man, there's something about this that's so physically imposing, this gigantic old school case. It's got no LEDs, it's got no markers, it's got a case that rusts anywhere you touch it. If I come back in a week, there will be a rust spot right there where I just touched it. And it just sounds so dangerous. The 
way it blooms. Ah, oh, it makes me feel it makes me feel sick. In the most like glorious way possible. This is one that when I demoed it, I said would go great with extended range instruments, baritones, seven strings, eight strings, stuff like that. Got a new baritone. So might as well try it out, right? Yeah, yeah, that sounds wonderful with baritone. Nice and tight and thick and meaty. Oh, it's so tiny and cute. The AWOL virus, a simple fuzz. No control over the fuzz, just a volume control and an on and off switch. No tone, no gain level. Maybe you just want a little fuzz. That's a little fuzz. The virus by AWOL. This has been my go-to Big Muff style fuzz for a few years. The Caprid, Caprid? Not sure how to pronounce that word. I know it means sheep or goat or something like that. It's made by Renan Cuff. It's obviously a ram's head Big Muff clone. <laughs> It's a great sounding muff and it's, how do I sell this? Matt from Ren and Cuff drove down to my house on his motorcycle, hung out with Steve and I for a podcast and gave this to me. I can't sell this. Get into some weirdness now. Plasma pedal by Game Changer. It shoots lightning. How can you look at that and not feel happiness? <laughs> it shoots lightning. It's actually a pretty divisive fuzz pedal as far as the internet is concerned. I ordered this, I bought it. It's got my name signed on the back because I was part of the, uh, the Kickstarter or GoFundMe or something like that. They wrote my name on there. It shoots lightning. How the heck am I supposed to sell this? I can't sell that. Affordable royalty is what the Kuvave is. I actually own three Kuvaves right now. This one's got the logo printed on the back. I can't sell this one. Maybe I'll sell the other two someday. I honestly have no idea how I'm gonna pick any, any of these. How am I gonna pick any of these? It feels impossible, but it shouldn't. They're fuzzes. I should be able to pick like two or three and be like, these are the only fuzzes I need. But there's more to it than that. There's something more than just the function that they provide. This is the Carcosa by DOD. This is a fuzz that sold relatively cheap, brand new, like 99 bucks, 100 bucks, something like that. Unfortunately, Samsung has shut down DoD and Digitech. They didn't think it was worth continuing on. So everything that you see on the new market from DoD or Digitech is being cleared out of a warehouse right now. That means when it's gone, it's gone. If you see anything new out there that you want, I would snatch it up because after it's gone, it's gonna be 
used prices and who knows what's going to catch fire and be the next flip of the century sort of thing. I think the Carcosa is an amazing fuzz for the $100 that they sold it for. It just sounds evil. Feels like it's sucking all the air out of the room when you turn on the Carcosa. Here's a weird one. The Kangra by Walrus Audio. This is a signature pedal for the guitarist at SNL. Saturday Night, Li Saturday Night Live, guys. And it's super duper weird. <laughs> you have a fuzz on one side, filter on the other, an auto filter. Like an Ottawa sort of thing here. No knobs for the fuzz other than volume, just a mid switch and a modern to vintage switch. It's wacky, but there's something about it that I just adore. Here's a newer one. I've been using this on my board since getting it. Yes, I churched it. I played it at church live. This is the Vespa by Beatronics. <laughs> got beautiful art. It's small. It does this really fun quick switch between a normal fuzz and an octave fuzz. You just double tap it. I've been having a blast with this fuzz. Oh man. Here comes a noisemaker. The Moth by Fuzz Rocious. On one side, you've got just a brutal fuzz. Then you hit this switch and it engages this hard chopping tremolo that pushes you into like ring mod territory. It's too much fun. Walrus Jupiter. I'll follow this up with another walrus fuzz that basically has the same guts as this, but has some extra stuff going on. So from what I understand, the Jupiter is the fuzz side of the Janus. So if you like the way the fuzz sounds in the Janus, but you don't want to deal with the size or the added functionality of the built-in tremolo and the joysticks and all that, the Jupiter is the way to go. But look at this. Another crazy one, the Beatronic Swarm. This one has basically three different fuzzes that you blend together. I forget which does which, but two of them make really crazy, like 
octave harmonic, like wandering around. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain it. It's crazy. See what I mean? How do you even categorize something like that? If I get rid of this, I'm never gonna have a, I'm never gonna have a fuzz that does this. Again, like that's the fear anyways. I have three tone benders in my collection. Might as well do them all at the same time. I only recently discovered that I even like tone benders. And now I have three of them and they're all different, which makes it very hard. If I was to keep one tone bender, which one would I keep? They look fun together. Gray, red, and blue. It's kind of patriotic almost. Silver, red, and blue instead of red, white, and blue. And then the Park Fuzz by Earthquaker Devices, which is a tone bender with a tone control on it. I know that's exactly what you wanted to hear. Three tone benders on at the same time. Oh man, I'm halfway through. I'm an hour into recording this video and I'm halfway through. This is another fuzz from Pelican Noiseworks. The Half Horse. It's one side of the Pelotar. I forget which side, but that's the joke. It's half the horse. And it just, it's got this gnarly Velcro ripping sound to it. Henry's cheering me on from the sidelines. You want to wave to the camera, Henry? Get out here and wave to the camera. How do you think these pedals sound, Henry? Good. They sound good, huh? Mm -hmm. Do they sound fuzzy? Yeah. Which one's your favorite so far? Well, you let me know at the end, okay? And I think these. He likes the tone benders the best so far. All right. <laughs> on to another affordable one, the JHS 3 Series. Just so you guys know, I've got the volume pretty low in here. I'm not gonna record fuzz pedals for two hours, which is what this is gonna take, and blow my ears out, or risk the safety of my son's ears. So yeah, the volume's pretty low. I just love the Velcro rip on this one. It's so fat. If you're 
looking for Velcro on a budget, I recommend it. I really I do. You like this one? Yeah. Here, you want to put it on the shelf for me? Yeah. Let's do the big red one. Oh, Henry wants to do the big red one now. <laughs> this big red one? This is the Cherry Box by Lollygagger. Yes, the box is made out of wood. Real wood from a real tree. That's just a silly fuss. That's my favorite so far. That's your favorite so far? Yeah. All right, you want to put it on the shelf for me? Yes, do this. All right. Henry is taking over the show. This is the black nettle. This is one I covered recently. It's kind of a tweaked out big muff variant. Interestingly, it has half the gain of a normal big muff. And then a silicone LED switching on, I'm assuming, two different gain diodes. Another Jupiter effects pedal. This is the super weirdo. Mm. <laughs> it has a momentary switch here. up to its name that's for sure it's got some sort of like doubling quick delay on there some sort of wild momentary thing that's doing like an octave self oscillating thing i try not to understand this pedal because i like being surprised by it all right henry we'll do that one next put that on the shelf i've got a helper we're running out of room why do you think I'm doing this video? Because I'm running out of room to store all these fuzz pedals. <laughs> all right. The Chase Bliss Audio Preamp Mark II. <laughs> Henry not included. You have to get your own Henry. One of the most versatile pedals there is, flat out. It can be a boost, a preamp, an overdrive, a wah, a bunch of different kinds of fuzzes. It's over the top. All right. The red one. Okay, put that on the shelf for me. Be careful with that one. That one's very expensive. <laughs> All right, this is another pedal from Beatronics. I actually traded Sean Pierce Johnson for this one. I forget what I gave him, but I got this in return. I don't spend a lot of time with this, but I keep it because it's one of Beatronics like relic ones with all the extra special little bits of hardware and stuff. I remember it sounds weird though. They all sound weird. Another one for the shelf, Henry. Are we out of room yet? <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Henry's going for all the big ones. The Valco Blood Buzz. This has two sides to it. That thing's not gonna fit. No, it's probably not gonna fit there. We're gonna have to leave this on the table. Yeah. It has a fuzz side and an overdrive side. Obviously, we're gonna focus on the fuzz side. You've really got to want it though, with this gigantic case. Look at how big this thing is. Okay, we'll do that one next. And you can pop it open and store things in there. What would you store in a giant fuzz pedal like this? What would you put in here, Henry? A bunch, 100 pieces of Laffy Taffy. <laughs> 100 pieces of Laffy Taffy. All right, we're gonna have to start keeping these on the table now because we're almost out of room on this shelf. All right, Henry wants this thing. What's going on with this one is it has all these little switches here, which means that this fuzz pedal literally has like 13 million different possible combinations. That's not the real number, but it is in the millions. The math has been done and you could do 10 different fuzz settings per day on this and never get to the end of it in your lifetime. Uh, it is a fuzz pedal building pedal. You find a sound in this, you might be able to find other fuzz pedals that fit that recipe, but you're never gonna be able to do what you're able to do with this. It's, it's honestly overwhelming. All right, just with randomly switching stuff around, I found a fat sounding fuzz, a Q. I don't have time to explore all my favorite settings on here. Just randomly fumbling around, here's a really bright, like, lo-fi sort of sound. Next up is the LAN Devices HP2. I'm getting tired, guys. <laughs> tired and sweaty in this hot garage, slaving over a pile of hot fuzz pedals. Okay, but the LAN Devices HP2. This is a pedal that kind of gets made in small batches, and people flip them, people scalp them on the used market for prices that I think are ridiculous. I think it's a really fun, great sounding fuzz, but I think you should get on the mailing list and try to get one when they come up new. Don't, don't pay scalpers for these things. Watch, I'm gonna end up selling it for 900 bucks. Yeah. This is the Little Bear G3 tube guitar drive pedal. I remember this being fuzzy. I'm not sure I have the right power supply for it. There we go, I got it. Not sure what I was going for there, but it's a $50 pedal with a tube in it. I don't know how much heavy lifting the tube actually does. 
There are people who have told me that they were able to make it sound different by swapping the tube. His power needs are kind of inconvenient. 18 volts at 300 milliamps is what I needed to get it to turn on. Another pick from Henry is the Spiral Effects Brute. Spiral Effects is a pedal company started by Tom Cram, the guy who was at Digitech DoD, making stuff matter over there at Digitech DoD until Samsung shut them down. So now he's making spiral effects and they're pretty special. Getting close to the end of the pile over here. Next selection from Henry is the Bearmore. This is special because it was made by someone who's now in the 60 Cycle Hum audience. He's a longtime member of the Facebook group, but I bought it from him before I was doing the podcast, before I had the YouTube channel, before any of this was in my mind at all, I was running an all ages venue and his band came through on tour and played, and he was selling handmade pedals as merch. This is called the Bear More Fuzz. And on the bottom it says, bear with me here. All hand done. It's a very simple concept. A simple fuzz circuit in there with a ridiculous boost. I think after it. <laughs> It gets crazy loud and sometimes I have to rattle around to get it to work. that really fat Velcro tone that it gives me. Also, someone handmade this and I bought it from them in person at the venue that I used to run. Who else would want this except for me? I can't ever sell this. This is my fuzz pedal. I can't sell that. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. All right, the brothers. This is actually two fuzz pedals. And it's two boosts and it's two drives. It's six pedals. And you can mix them in parallel or in series, whatever you want to do. So that was the right side fuzz. to mix dark sounds with bright sounds. So we'll go dark on one side and bright on the other. There's, this is the sort of thing where there's just endless creative possibilities. And with all the dip switches on the back, you can get wild with this forever and ever and ever. All right. The On Air Fuzz by Power Pedals. And then Henry wants me to do the loaf after that.
And it's got a built-in boost. It goes really bright too. All right, Henry wants me to do the loaf next from our friends over at Big Ear Pedals. This is one that I've been saying goes great with instruments that are low AF. See what I mean? It loves low tune extended range stuff. It's so fat. All right, three left. Oh my gosh, my body hurts from this gauntlet of fuzz. The Ad Violence by Jupiter. With a name like Ad Violence, it's gotta be good, right? Okay, two more to go. <laughs> All right, this is the model 001 fuzz. It is a signature fuzz of our friend Blake Wyland over at the Tone Mob podcast. Solid gold effects made this for him. Uh, this one has a glitter top and purple paint on it. This is the germanium version of this fuzz. <laughs> fuzzes sound different. Maybe they all sound the same to you, but to me it's like, how am I going to choose what to get rid of? They all feel special to me. They all feel like they have a different character and personality to them. It's going to be tough. It is going to be really tough. Right here is the fuzz that I've personally paid the most money for. I think I paid like 450 bucks for this. Someone else bought it. They were all, they were able to grab it from the original first run of the Bliss Factory. And uh, they sold it to me close to the cost of new. Instead of trying to flip it, trying to scalp it like so many people have been doing. So huge thanks. You're my hero. I get to have a Bliss Factory, which is the Chase Bliss version of the Z-Vex Fuzz Factory put out to help kind of promote and celebrate Reverb's pedal movie. How do I even scratch the surface of this in 20 seconds? I have no idea what I'm about to do.
my gosh. I've sweated myself. <laughs> you sit around playing with a giant stack of fuzz pedals for two hours straight with a baritone. You're going to sweat yourself. That's just what's going to happen. So what do you guys think? What should I sell? What should I keep? Right now, I'm too shell-shocked to even think straight, let alone make those sorts of decisions. I'm sure I'll figure it out as I'm editing. <laughs> but I've got to get rid of some of these. It's not healthy. It's not acceptable. It's not normal. I'm not starting a museum the way Josh Scott is. I'm not starting a pedal museum. This still has to be my personal collection. I can't have everything. I can't keep everything. I don't expect anyone. I would be upset if I found out someone out there was using everything I've got going on back here as an example for what they should be doing. You shouldn't. Before I started this channel, I had like a dozen pedals. I had like four or five guitars. It all felt very normal. And then I started doing YouTube and I just keep stuff around because stuff keeps coming in and it feels special to me. Or I'm like, mm, I might need this for a concept video or something like that. And it becomes very hard to sell anything. But I, I'm just at the place where I can't keep everything forever. All right, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments, support us on Patreon, buy a shirt, hopefully a dry one, and stay grounded. Bye, everybody.